Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. John here from IncomeMesh.com and in today's video we're going to take a step back a little bit from the really hardcore tutorials and talk a bit more philosophically about Gutenberg versus page builders and the predictions I have as well as three examples of how I can back up those predictions. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. But before we do, hey guys, if you're new to the channel, I'm John from IncomeMesh.com. My goal online is to help you find the perfect tool for your next project online. And if you like what you're going to find out in this video, hit the subscribe button, the like button and stick around until the end for a very special offer. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it. And let's first start by separating the question. You know, the question is always, do I use Gutenberg? or do I use Breezy or do I use uh, Elementor or Thrive Architecture or any of the other page builders that are out there? And really, you have to separate that question between today versus next year. You know, if you were to look at using a page builder versus Gutenberg right now and you're just going to go blow for blow with some of the best functionality that each one has to offer, today, I would argue that some of the page builders are going to outclass Gutenberg in its pure raw form. You start adding in some of the uh, plugins that we'll talk about in a little bit, and you start to get very close to leveling playing fields. But when you when we get deeper in this, you start to see the growth curve of each of these uh, kind of factions, I guess you'd say. Uh, you have to think about next year. Where is the WordPress community going to be in 12 months of open source development on Gutenberg versus 12 months of the team's at the different page builders, how are they going to be able to continue to support their own development internally or outsource some of their development externally with the community as well? So you have to really think about that there. You know, right now, Gutenberg is in its early days and page builders are mature. You know, the only page builder that I think is really popping up that is really interesting and very also uh, in its juvenile infancy is uh, Breezy and it's doing a great job. But I have some examples of that as well uh, where you can kind of see uh, a bit of the writing on the wall a little bit. Additionally, considering the open source nature of Gutenberg and WordPress, you've got every developer out there understands the fact that Gutenberg is going to ban every WordPress installation going forward. That's a huge driver for them to develop for Gutenberg as opposed to working on some of the other uh, third party plugins that are out there. So let's talk a little bit about growth curve. So how will Gutenberg and other page builders growth be supported over time? Let's first take a look at the my very scientific graph of what I'm kind of showing the Gutenberg growth curve to be. So right here, we're in the infancy, we're launching, you know, it's, it's not the not the most development that's going into it that there will be, but you can see there's early land grabs, you know, cadence blocks, ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, uh, stackable. There are these few plugins that are really shining to the top of the pile and getting a lot of the momentum in that initial land grab for uh, market share within Gutenberg. But as it starts to become the de facto, as it, as it gets more matured, as people learn how to use Gutenberg, as they get better and better, you'll see that growth curve increase. Now let's consider how that's going to be about page builders. So if you think about Orange as being just the any of the page builders out there, you know, Thrive, Elementor, Breezy, any of those, you know, right now they're in that matured state where they're they still have that strong market share. They're sharing amongst each other, but most people are using a page builder if they're using it at all. Um, otherwise, they're probably not all that interested in doing advanced designs in the first place. So you have this going on, but as the growth curve of Gutenberg begins to pick up and gain steam, it's only natural they're going to be taking some market share from the rest of the page building community, and that's going to have to you know as as market share is lost, uh, they're going to start to lose some revenue, uh, depending on the the models of, you know, Divi has a lifetime deal, Element, Elementor is by the, the, the year, and all of that good stuff. But they're going to start losing revenue, which is going to force them to figure out how to continue to be competitive. Is that to slow down development? Is it to reduce support? How are they going to be able to keep up with the growth of the open source option and the default option? Because it's kind of like the, the court cases, right? Like, you're innocent until proven guilty. Well, I mean, the default WordPress editor needs to be proven to be insufficient for your needs before you're going to go and pay for a professional solution. So Gutenberg is going to start to have a little bit of upper hand here as it gains maturity as well. So I can only expect to see at some point there's going to be that tipping point in functionality and growth where Gutenberg can and probably will begin to grow faster than some of the other plugins. Now, keep in mind, there's a risk here because if you're in, let's say, a Divi, um, you're getting Divi functionality. There is developed by Divi. There are the other third parties that can add additional functionality onto it. But in general, it's going to work a very tightly knitted ecosystem there. Um, so you're going to have a, a quality level that you expect. 
with Gutenberg, you're going to be a bit more in the waters where you have to kind of wade through and see which plugins can work for you, which ones are not quite um, uh, trustworthy. And uh, I do have a spreadsheet that I'll talk about in a little bit that can give you kind of the lay of the land that I see uh, for the Gutenberg plugins, which ones you can and cannot use and how to best use them. So now let's talk about three examples of Gutenberg's closing speed and how it's starting to really pick up on some of the uh, premium page builders that are out there. And the first example here, whoops, I had these all pop up here. <laughs> it's supposed to go one at a time, but adding stock images directly into the editor with Drop It. And I'll just show you that real briefly here. I think you guys have probably seen that if you've seen my videos before, but if we go up here, let me hide myself. If I want to add an image in from Unsplash, I can just go click one button, and this is with the Drop It plugin, and add this image in. Boom, I have a stock photo here. I can add it to my library. I can do whatever it is that I want to do. Now let's compare this with a premium page builder that has had this feature on their roadmap for quite a while. So I just bounced over to uh, Breezy's blog where they're talking through their um, launch plan. And please don't take this. I'm not taking shots or anything. I'm just, I just want to make sure everyone has their eyes open with kind of how things are going on the on, in the landscape here. So what this is, is I really appreciate Breezy for having their kind of open, open roadmap for all the features I want to have and when they're planning on getting them out. So as we kind of scroll down here on the next, so these are not released features yet. You can see kind of where they're at right now is tomorrow okay so we can see these check boxes mean they're already accomplished let's see where they stopped all right so they're here and as we look to where they're going to have that feature the particular unsplash import feature we're going to scroll down a little bit mega menu notification promo bar type kit unsplash pro so there are many many releases away from having the same functionality that's available today um, for free in in the Gutenberg repository. Um, now, is it going to be the exact same quality? Is it going to be better? That's still to be found out. But the point is that one guy can write the plugin that can bring in that functionality that has to be shared amongst the entire team for some of these other premium things. It's just kind of one example of kind of how things can start to go over time. So let's look at number two. So pre-built block libraries with Cadence Blocks. So Elementor, uh, Divi has entire page layouts and uh, Breezy has block layouts. And now as well, here in uh, Gutenberg, we can go here to our row layouts, and this is using cadence blocks, and add a you know nice little three section in, th uh, three icon section in, and everything's editable right then and there. It's a very premium feature that's available for a couple clicks of a button and for a free plugin. Last example here is reusable blocks. Now this is one where most page builders have come out with their version of reusable blocks or reusable modules, however they want to call it. Um, and you know, it, it came out with the launch of Gutenberg, but it's just to show that Gutenberg is not that far behind a lot of these page builders in terms of functionality. So, you know, Thrive Architect calls them symbols uh, or templates and uh, Divi calls them global items and global modules and things like that. But you can quickly, if you find something that you like, like this guy here, let's say you change the text around, I can take this entire row that we just created here, all of this content here, and I can add it to my reusable blocks, and I can save it, which you should not name it, save this block. But then anywhere else in the content, if you want to pull that content back in, save this block, I can pull it in, and now these items will be linked. I can also unlink them by saying convert to a regular block, and I've just effectively created myself my own template library here within Gutenberg. So the question you have to ask yourself here is, which curve do you want to ride? You know, Do you want to be on the curve that is going to have to be fighting against the entire WordPress community, or do you want to start to learn Gutenberg, uh, you know, embrace it, understand that it's still in the infancy, but you want to be on that curve that's going to skyrocket up instead of the curve that's going to have to, you know, struggle, not struggle, but they're going to have more opposition than Gutenberg does in the future. Well, if you do, then I'd like to offer you to kind of take a look at my new course. It's called uh, Gutenberg Hero. And this course goes into everything that I've gathered through testing and building and working with clients using the Gutenberg plugin. Um, you know, it, it talks through what is Gutenberg and why it's a big deal. It walks through a huge list of resources that I'm keeping together here for you and keeping updated where you'll be able to see exactly which plugins I'm recommending. It's kept in a spreadsheet where you can see all the plugins, all the features. So which plugins offer testimonials? Which ones offer calls to action? Which ones offer Google Maps integrations and things like that? And you can quickly see which ones stand out there. You can also get in here 
Um, you know, understanding the different toolbars, there's like so many different toolbars in Gutenberg and they can be a little confusing, but once you get them, you're like, oh, this makes total sense. Keyboard shortcuts. We also go through and build an entire uh, opt-in page, which is, you know, using anchored links and it's using a bunch of different blocks and a bunch of different layouts. And it's all click by click. And everything that we're using in here is a 100% free resource. So if you look at the cost of a Divi or the cost of any of those page builders, you're going to make that investment back extremely quickly if you learn how to master and how to move forward confidently with Gutenberg. So if you'd like to check that out, the link is in the description below, or you can just head over to incomesh.com. There'll be a button there on the homepage uh, to say check out the, the course. So I hope this video is helpful. What do you think? Do you think that Gutenberg is uh, kind of a flash in the pan and that the page builders are going to always have a, that dominant threshold in the market? Or do you think kind of the way that I do that Gutenberg, while still has a, is a little rough around the edges, the future for it is, can only be brighter than, than how it is now? And... I think that the page builders are going to have to follow Elementor's lead because Elementor has kind of embraced with their new plugin, Elementor Blocks for Gutenberg, where they allow you to um, you know, integrate the two as nicely as possible. And I talked about that as well in the Gutenberg course. So please, if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. But most importantly, go check out my course. It's there on incomesh.com. And I thank you for your time. Have a great day.